Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. Biggest crowd, or as producer Ted would say, huge. The biggest crowd in the history of our show. Look at that. Good morning, everybody. Wow. Huge crowd today. Happy Friday. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Jace. We have that Friday feeling today. I love it. Must be the, thank you. Have a seat, let's get started. Wow, I'm not joking. Uh, we're going on season five starting in September and in, well, basically this is still season four. In four seasons, we've never had a bigger audience than today here in the studio. So it's been great, yeah. it's huge. And you, you came on a good day. Our, our girl Kendall is on assignment and filling in. She's been a dear friend. She's family to our show since day one. Give it up to my good friend. It's Miss Shannon, everybody. Hi, sweetheart. You look, you look great. Thank you, thank you. Is that a new ensemble? You look great. It is, it is new-ish. I was looking for an excuse to wear it and this was the perfect day. You mm -hmm. look fantastic. Woo! You look fantastic. Hey, we have so much to get to. I, I don't turn the dial. The other shows are reruns anyway. And, and, the, uh, and then over on The View, they're just screaming at each other. So right. I just, just keep right here. Uh, so first of all, I want to tell you, you know, I've been talking about it every day this week. Uh, we are going, uh, the Jason Show is going, you know, we're, we, uh, the Jason Show is in uh, several different uh, cities across the, the, this area. Uh, and one of them is our station in Duluth. And we've been saying Rochester too. We're, we swear Rochester, we're coming eventually. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are heading to Duluth. Uh, the whole crew is heading there to tape a series of stories. And we're going to dedicate a whole week of the Jason Show in, in, in August to Duluth. So we're going to be there, yeah. Now, we are not... People keep asking me at the Target. I had a lady. Well, I'll tell you about the lady at Target a little <laughs> bit later. But no, it was good. It was good, and it was about producer Ted. But anyway, uh, but everybody, no matter where I go, people are like, you're coming to Duluth? Are you doing live shows? No, we're not doing like a live broadcast. It's even better. Uh, we're going to be up there for three, four days taping like 20 stories. Uh, and But we, I want to meet you. I want Kendall and I want to meet you. So take a look at this. July 26th at 1 p.m., at Bent Paddle Brewing Company. You can make the two of us. That's our, those are our new publicity photos right hey. there. Look at us right there. Uh, Friday, Friday, uh, July 26th at 1 p.m. So spread the word. Come see us and we want to meet you. Now, I'm coming off, uh, I'm coming off an emotional uh, high. I really am. I, if my face looks a little puffy, it is because, um, uh, you guys know that I do a radio show uh, over there on my talk 107.1, Jason and Alexis in the morning. I've been doing it for 10 years. And uh, the entire time I've been on the radio, I've actually been on radio for 13 years. And the whole time, I've had the same partner. I've had the same radio wife. I've had the same friend, and that's Alexis Thompson. And uh, uh, for as long as I've known her, Alexis and her husband, Angel, uh, have wanted a baby. Uh, and, they've, uh, and Lex has been very open, uh, and I, I, so I'm not telling tales out of school. Uh, Lex has struggled with fertility problems and uh, it's been, you know, an em anyone that struggled with it, you know it, what an emotional toll it can take. Well, uh, Alexis returned today after about four days off and we are playing a game like we do. We play goofy games on that show and Lex goes, I have a quiz. And the quiz is, guess who I am? So, you know, she lists off clues and it's a movie star. Well, we got to the last question and well, this happened. Hmm. All right, let's see if you can figure out who this person is based on... A secret. I found that I was pregnant on Memorial Day and can finally, with my sweet honey of nine years, almost 18 years together, tell my friends my baby is due in January. Hmm. B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> There's another B. Arthur. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Partner of how many years? 18, 18 years, years together. Okay. Married nine. Oh. The answer is me what what 
What? What? Yeah. Oh, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> What? <laughs> yes. Yes. You're pregnant? I am. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I'm so nervous to tell you guys oh. just now. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. I can finally tell oh people. Gosh, so I told my family on oh my Saturday god. and <laughs> Yeah. So It's I, uh, Shannon, uh, Shannon, and I are both real, not just TV radio friends. We're we're real friends with Lex, mm-hmm. and I found a little bit of irony. Uh, I, I remember uh, uh, about eight years ago, Lex and I were in Dallas together, and Lex opened up. We had a really, really honest conversation about her struggles. And I'm returning to Dallas this weekend for a short trip, and I said, "What's the chances?" And listen to this. Listen to this, everybody. We connected the dots, and you know our friend psychic Maria Shaw, who's on our show. Uh, she's on the radio show too. The last time Maria Shaw was on the Jason and Alexa show, Maria looked at me and she looked at Ale- she said to Alexa, she was Lex, she was I don't know if you're trying, but I think you're going to have a baby within the next few months. Mm-hmm. And I got very uncomfortable. I remember like getting clenched because I thought to myself, "Oh, Maria, touchy, su- you know, sensitive subject." I remember being uncomfortable, and 2 months later it happened. So yeah. So yeah. Congratulations to I love you. Shannon and I love you and Angel, and you're going to be, that kid is uh, going to try to keep it together because i got to be funny here in a little bit, but that kid is going to be so lucky because uh, she is going to be the best mom in the world. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know. I'm like. <laughs> I look like a gay raccoon. <laughs> It's good tears, though, this time. It's good tears. It's good tears. Oh, God, I look horrible. Let's go. (laughs) God, this time. Okay. Uh, From raccoons to kitties, it's time for the hot dish. Uh, The Cats trailer dropped last night, and it's it's getting a lot of reaction. Before we talk about it, uh, take a look at the memories. is just applauding because we made them. Nobody wants to applaud. Nobody wants to applaud that trailer. Uh, thank God I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> I, uh, hey, it has a great cast. James Corden, uh, I- Idris Elba. I'm concentrating on the positive, Aaron. No. I, yeah, yeah. No. I know you love this. Uh, 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 Jason Derulo's in there. Uh, Jennifer Taylor, Hudson's Jennifer in Hudson, it. Taylor Swift's a kitty, for heaven's sake. Trying to be sexy is gross. I know. I, I look. I everyone knows. I've talked about it. I've only walked out of two Broadway shows ever. I walked out of Cats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I could only get through one life. You know what yeah. I mean? I like Cats have nine. I got through one and a half, and then I walked out of Lay Miserable. Those are the two that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. See. I don't care about Cats, and I don't care about that girl and her bread. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> But I agree with you. I've, I've sat through a lot of That is also the only musical I've ever left. Yeah. Cats. I Cats. I don't understand it. I don't oh. understand. What are they trying? They're trying to get through a night, and then they're trying to get one of the kitties to heaven, and then, well, how morbid is that? Yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to sit there. It's a bunch of creepy It's loving? Poems. It's loving? It's lovely. It's Great. No. I mean, no, I, no. And then these are creepy. They look like creepy Thundercats. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
They're just, it's weird looking. I love the technology, but they're weird looking. As a cat lady, they take everything I love and they have poisoned it. That's yeah, what they've yeah. done. And as a dog person, I'm glad I'm a dog person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back in the dish. Here's something that I love. Next <laughs> in the dish, changing gears, literally the Top Gun Maverick trailer. <laughs> just like, wow. That is a <laughs> I think a woman just had a baby. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the trailer, the sequel is coming up. The trailer just dropped. It only took 34 years. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I this isn't my favorite movie of the 80s. And you know, a little little couch jumper is a little weird, but this. Tom looks so good. Look at yeah. this. You should be at least a two-star admiral by now. Yet here you are. Captain. Why is that? It's one of life's mysteries, sir. I think I think my friends here will agree. Whoever did that trailer, bravo to you. That is a fantastic trailer. Don't you love it? I love it. I love it. The music, it's reminiscent. It's just of, appropriate. And then when he goes on, you know, like who races a jet with a motorcycle? Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tom Cruise. You yeah. can only do it for Tom yeah. Cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, it also stars Ed Harris. Val Kilmer returns as uh, as Eisman. Uh, a couple new people are in it. Jennifer Connelly's in it, who looks amazing. In its theater sometime in 2020. Okay. We have a great show today. Go grab another cup of coffee and meet me back here in two minutes. Back after this. Coming up in just a bit, you love her on SVU and you loved her on As the World Turns. Tamara Tooney is our special guest today. She's in the Jason Show studio, starring in the Ordway's 42nd Street. We'll talk to this fabulous lady just ahead. Then Stranger Things Season 3 is getting all sorts of great reviews. Well, I'm almost done with it. So do I agree with the love fest? We'll step in the upside down to find out. And producer Ted has a new TV assignment, watching the new guilty pleasure reality show, Marrying Millions. What is this? And does Ted like it? We'll find out when we return. We, ha we have some of the choices that didn't make the cut for your sign-off here. <laughs> and I was, I, was, I was hoping that you could uh, take us through some of the things that you decided not to say at the end of your broadcast. Oh, how did you get a hold of these? Um... We made them up, but um, <laughs> these are the rejected uh -huh. sign-offs mm -hmm. that Nora right. O'Donnell did not want to say. I'm Nora O'Donnell, and you can't make this stuff up, folks. Okay, it would have been good. It would be good. Best one? Good night, and good luck with all that. <laughs> I'm Nora O'Donnell, and that Nora O does it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty good. That's okay. good. That's good. Yeah. And that is the CBS Evening News. Wow, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> that is the new anchor and managing editor of the CBS Evening News. That's my girl, Nora O'Donnell. Nora, by the way, to put in perspective, uh, it's history right there. She's the th only the third woman to ever solo anchor a network nightly newscast. That's right. Behind Katie Couric and Diane Sawyer, Nora took over the CBS Evening News on Monday. I love her. She's my favorite journalist because she is hard. She isn't afraid to ask the tough questions. She beats up on everybody. I love her. Good luck to you, Nora. And more hot dish for you. Luann. <laughs> this is so stupid. Luann. 
Luann Delisettes, you know Countess Luann from the Real Housewives of New York. No, if you don't watch the show, don't worry. You don't need to watch the show to know how ridiculous this is. Luann from the Real Housewives of New York has a new product, okay, that she's promoting. Now, that's nothing new. The, the housewives, they make uh, skin care lines and um, skinny girl margaritas, all that stuff. And it's, the product is based off her latest music video. Let's look at that first. Hell with Countess, now I'm queen. You can catch me on the street. Fabulous and looking sweet. All ducked out, head to toe. Sexy chills, don't you know? Men will come and men will go. Love yourself and Feeling let it show. Joe. Yes, that is her single. Yeah. Yeah. I know. What are you Ridiculous. My goodness. Anyway, that's her single, Feeling Giovanni. Now, you might be wondering, what does Giovanni feel like? Well, I've never wondered that, actually. Well, now you can feel it, friends, because the, the Countess has partnered with an IV drip company uh, for a new IV drip called Feeling Giovanni Drip. It is an intravenous formula that supposedly boosts your energy, uh, boosts your mood, and helps you feel good. One bag of Feeling Giovanni retails for only $380. Let's, let's cut over to Shannon and see if she has anything to say. I aspire to the day that I am so pretend famous that I can charge $300 a bag for Gatorade that goes in your veins. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's a, just, that gives me yeah. breath. The it gives me breath. Drop the mic. Let's just let's <laughs> move on. Next in the dish, Disney owes a lot of thanks to one movie for cementing its summer box office domination. And this is what's interesting. It is not the movie you think. You would think, oh, Jason, it's Avengers Endgame. Or maybe you would think, oh, Toy Story 4. No. Will Smith and the cast of Aladdin are getting giant thank yous from Mickey Mouse. Disney movies have accounted for, and this is what's frightening, or good. Disney movies have accounted for 50% of the total domestic box office sales for this summer. And while, uh, yeah, and while Avengers, and while Avengers and Toy Story 4 did well, everyone knew that they would be a success, it was Aladdin that was a wild car and blew away expectations, even when critics were like, Mer. and it sustained, here's the difference, it sustained its success over several weeks. Avengers Endgame, Toy Story 4, and Aladdin have amassed more than $1.5 billion in ticket sales in the United States alone. See, the, the reason this is even a story is because Avengers, like any big movie like that, they come out and they explode in week one, and then they have a sharp 40, 50, 60% drop. Aladdin had a fantastic opening week, but what the difference was, Aladdin remained steady. And Aladdin was pulling in 17, 20, $22 million week after week after week, despite critical backlash and people kind of, the, the, the fancy critics not loving it. I loved, I loved Aladdin. I thought it was one of the best live action Disney movies, yeah. I love all three of those movies. But back to what you're saying about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, it is a little scary to me that our whole box office is dominated by Disney products. Because it's just one perspective. I'm sorry, I know you got your website. I will ignore the Mickey Mouse tattoo on my box. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I don't have that, I really don't. No. Yeah, still ahead. Uh, the new season of Stranger Things is out and I devoured it. Does it live up to the hype? I'll tell you when we come back. Back after this on this Friday morning. Stay with us, everybody. I swear I have legs. They're down here. There we go, Director Steve. There we go. Look, I have magic legs, Lieutenant Dan. There we go. Welcome back. <laughs> well, by the way, this is my lucky Sarah Jessica Parker outfit. Like, this is what I wore to meet Sarah Jessica, and I haven't washed it, and I won't. So if I stink, I'm sorry. The new Stranger, <laughs> the new Stranger, the new Stranger Things, uh, the new season of Stranger Things dropped while I was on vacation. And before I give my review, uh, here's a little clip from the trailer. 
It's building something. No matter what happens, we have to stop him. Together. going to end your friends then we are going to end everyone yeah they're gonna try well let me just say i loved this season i wasn't a real big fan of season two uh, i of course you can't really ever replicate uh, the joy of season one something new something fresh as a kid of the 80s yeah i am a little biased because these kids are literally my age in 1985. I would be their age. Uh, but what I think this season captured uh, better than maybe season two is what it was like being a kid in that era of the 80s. Yes, the plot with the aliens, that's fantastic. But what I really connected to was the themes, the universal themes like, you know, that awkward age where you stop being a kid and playing Dungeons and Dragons and you start liking girls. Well, that never really happened to me, but you know what I mean. But <laughs> I went through a different phase. But I, and your friends, you know, your friends start leaving you for, for boyfriends and girlfriends and going to the mall. I had to explain, yeah, the joy, right? The youngins. Y'all nowadays do not know what it was like on a Saturday afternoon at any mall. It, do, when you watch Stranger Things there, young people, please know that is an accurate depiction. Everybody was drinking an Orange Julius at a mall, yeah. Again, again, you really can't replicate how great season one was. It was so fresh, it was so original, so well written. We love seeing Winona Ryder again. But I will tell you, season three is right up there with me. It is darker, it is scarier, and I love a show, whether it's the first season, second, or third, I love a show that in the first episode is whiz-bang, like gets you right away, and the first episode of season three, the first five minutes, you are like, what the blank is going on? It captured me right away, and again, uh, there are some emotional highs and lows in this. Uh, Hopper was on our show when we were at the Vikings, and he said to us that he did the mo they filmed the most emotional scene they ever did in three seasons. Well, I think you kind of know what that scene is. Uh, I'm not going to give anything away about the finale, but I will say this. You know how Marvel movies have a, a scene after the credits? Well, you should know, do not turn off the final episode of Stranger Things when you normally do. Wait! a little bit and you might be taken into the upside down for a little surprise. Yeah. Stranger Things season three is now available on Netflix. You'll love it. You'll love it. Still ahead, everybody. We're talking with one of the stars of NBC's hit drama, Law & Order SVU. Oh, I love her. Erin Schwab is literally fainting right now. Tomorrow, Tooney is in the house. You can see her at 42nd Street. We'll tell you about that when we come back. Back after this. The newest trashy show is out. Producer Ted had to watch it. He'll give us our take on marrying millions a little bit later. Stay with us, everybody, on this Friday morning. Back after this. Welcome back, my friends. Oh, wait till you see. Welcome back. Well, our next guest, our special guest today, I'm thrilled, Aaron Schwab has been like sweating all week, was a part <laughs> of one of the longest running primetime dramas in TV history. Starring as Dr. Melinda Warner, she appeared on 170 episodes of NBC's Law & Order SVU and is, a, and is in the Twin Cities performing at the glorious, the Ordway. Give it up for the fabulous Tamara Tooney. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, thank you. I, I can always tell, and I'm a fan of yours beside, other than that, but I can always tell the caliber of a guest by how excited the crew gets. And I said, <laughs> our, our family member, Aaron Schwab, all week long has been reminding us how fabulous you are. We go, I said, I know how fabulous she is. <laughs> well, yes, thank anyway, you, yeah. thank you, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> we're obviously going to talk about 42nd Street, but yes. why, when I said 170 episodes, you wiped your brow. Does it seem like 170 episodes? It seems like 570 episodes. 
<laughs> in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that show has been a major part of my career and a part of my life. So it's great. I'm proud of it. Is it what because of that show has such a a, a a vibrant fan base? I mean, it's I think what is it's been on fifth. Team, oh no, we're going into 21, 21 seasons. 21 seasons, yeah, it's yeah. Breaking the record. Yeah. Breaking the record. I think it did, it just broke Gunsmoke's record. Exactly. Gunsmoke was on 20, and then that's yeah, correct. Yeah. That's I'm a correct. TV nerd. But I anyway, noticed that yeah, about I'm, you. Yeah, I am a TV nerd. <laughs> what is like the, what, what's the number one thing people say to you when you're out on the street, like Law and Order fans? Do you, is there a common thread that runs through what everyone says to you? Well, I mean, mostly they, they just say how much they love the show. Yeah. You know, they love the show. But I had a great experience, you know, playing the med medical examiner on the show. And I always say, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. <laughs> um, but I, I was on the subway in New York, you know, and I take the subway. Everybody's like, you take the subway. I take the subway every day. Yeah. And so I'm on the platform and this older couple approaches me. And they say hello, and they say they're fans of the show. And then they tell me that they both teach uh, forensics at Columbia University. Oh, no. Oh, no. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> here it comes. Yeah. But basically, you know, they said, and you're making us look good. So that made me feel oh, really nice. good. Oh, nice. Yeah, they were wonderful. They is, were wonderful. Is, is the lingo hard to learn? I mean, the, did, did he, how long did, how many seasons did it take you to get used to the lingo? Well, not, a, not long, actually. You know, and I always say this because I, I talk to young people a lot. And, you know, a lot of the biology that I'm talking about as Dr. Warner, I learned in ninth grade, yeah. you know, and I remember it, you know. So I'm always like, you know, study and, and do well in school <laughs> and make, seriously, because just you just, just never know. Just in case know, you're in law you and order. You never know when yeah, you might, right. yeah. you might need to know where the femur is, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. But, um, but, you know, I, um, I had a medical dictionary, and of course, thanks to the internet, you know, I could go online and research stuff. And um, also, um, uh, the dictionary on, on um, the internet also has pronunciations. That's so nice, isn't they it? They added that little pronunciation, you know, icon, and I'd tap that sucker, and I'd be like, okay, that's how you say that, so. That's right. Yeah. From, one, from a TV institution to a musical institution, what is it like being in a property like 42nd Street. I mean, it's, when you think of musicals, it's, it's right up yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, it's iconic. Yeah. It's iconic. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a legendary show. And uh, what I'm loving about our production is it's honoring the history of that legendary show, but it's bringing it into the present. Yeah. And it's bringing it to 2019. And you're going to see love, a little, yeah. How so? I love when shows do that. How, how is this one? Well, I, well first of all, uh, the, the look of the show, because the cast is very diverse and multi-ethnic. So already it's like, okay, we're in the present. And then, oh, yeah, there they are. Yeah, doing there their they thing, are. Doing their thing. There's the and, present. Yes, and right. also, you know, um, uh, our director, uh, Michael Heitzman, his take on the show is very much trying to bring it into 2019. And then there are the arrangements. And Everett Bailey, who has played with some of the major rock bands, Bruce Springsteen, Bon Jovi, he's done the orchestrations and arrangements. So there are sections where, you know, our brilliant choreographer, Jared Grimes, would say, you know, let's start from the James Brown section. And I'm like, yes, the James Brown section, you know. So it's, it's very funky, it's very funky, it's very hip. You know, it's going to make you want to tap your feet, clap your hands, get up and dance. I mean, it's really fabulous. For people, that, if they haven't seen the show, tell, you play Dorothy. What's, yes, what's I play, Dorothy, what's Dorothy I play like? Dorothy Brock, and Dorothy Brock is, um, she's a, a Broadway star who hasn't had a hit show in a long time. And so she's being plugged into this show and she's desperate to, to be successful. You know, she's of a certain age. And, you know, as women, we often get pushed to the side when we reach a certain age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's very desperate for the show to be a hit. The director of the show, his reputation is on the line. He's desperate for it to be a hit. Oh, excuse me. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, and our young, our young, um, our young uh, uh, Peggy Sawyer character, who's a wannabe star, you know, she's desperate to have a hit also. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, a hit. H-I-T. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So the stakes are high. The stakes yeah. are high. You know, so the energy's great. The costumes are gorgeous. Amelia Soso, brilliant costumes. I mean, it's eye candy. It's ear candy. It's something for the heart and soul. It's just going to be fabulous. You got to come. What? Fabulous. What do you like? Two different art forms. Two different art forms with TV. It's stop, reset lighting, stop, go to the trailer, yes. stop. What is it about the stage that just fills your heart? Well, you, you know, my background is theater yeah. from the beginning. And, um, and there's something about live performance that's just very 
uh, empowering, yeah. if you will, and also the connection with the audience. audience. Like even in this room, yeah. you know, you can feel the energy. It's a give and take situation. It's reciprocal. And with TV and film, you know, you're shooting out a sequence. You're kind of shooting in a box. There's no, you know, you don't know what the finished product is until you see it on television or on the big screen. And for actors, I feel like um, the theater is where we have the most control over our performance. And we also have the luxury of rehearsal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which is fabulous. Well, we're tomorrow when we come back. Stay with us, everybody. Back in a moment. Cutting into live tissue always causes a vital reaction, markedly different from cutting into dead tissue. And there's no way an ME would leave this out or possibly mistake the two. No. Now you want to tell me what this is about? Uh, I'm sorry, Melinda, I can't. This is a, an active investigation. Before I re-autopsy this mummified body, is there anything I should know? Um. Well, she may be a Swiss national. We haven't been able to ID her. That may be helpful. Okay. Melinda, watch your back with Rudnick. Watch your back. Watch your back. Watch your back. That's a clip from Law & Order Special <laughs> Victims Unit. As we said a few minutes ago, the longest running primetime drama on TV and stars our special guest, Kamara Tooney. Dr. Melinda Warner is here. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Yes. Please tell me. Yes. Because you are as delightful as we all wanted you to be. Uh, please tell me, Mariska is as delightful as I would like her to be. Mariska's lovely. Mariska's yeah. lovely. Absolutely. The whole cast is lovely. Yeah. The whole cast. We were such a great team. We had such a great time. But before we dig any deeper, I have to make a little correction. I know, yeah. Yes, yes. Our, our arranger is Everett. Bradley, not Bailey. You know, I don't know. My brain is like, what time is it? It's, it's, early. it's early. We're show it's people. Early. It's show people. It's early. You know, we, we're nocturnal. No, but. exactly. No. <laughs> but yeah, you can tell. I, I don't think you can fake chemistry even. And you can tell. And that's a, probably a well-oiled it better be a well-oiled machine by season After 21. 21, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, also, uh, like I said, uh, Schwabi is a fan. Our executive producer, Jeff, is having litters of kittens because he would, <laughs> he would stay home. He would act like he was sick. We're about the same age. When he was a kid, he's like, Mom, I'm sick. He, well, he had, as the world turns, itis. That's what he had. <laughs> What? Thank you, thank you. What, what was that? What? Is... That was great. I mean, I did that show for 15 years. You know, I did for oh eight years. God. I left for five. I came back for seven. And um, uh, again, it was a well-oiled machine and a family. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you work with people every day uh, and you spend the majority of your time with them, you really do become a family, and it's, it's really great. You know what I think, too? I, I, yeah, absolutely. So often I think people go, oh, soap opera stars. But I have so much respect for soap opera, story. and I don't think you guys, I don't think the art gets, because you it's have to- It's the hardest. It's the hardest. It's you, the most difficult, it and, really is. And kind of explain why in like a Reader's Digest. Well, it, it's the most difficult because you're getting a new script every day. You're yeah. getting a new script every day. The script is 70 pages. You know, you're shooting an hour, well, 47 minute show. And uh, even though the storylines kind of drag out, so you kind of know generally what's going on, yeah. but it's a new script every day and you have to be really fast and really quick and be able to, you know, memorize and make choices and go with it and hit it and knock it out and get out by seven o'clock so everybody can go home and be with their families. Yeah. You know, it is. we ain't trying to be there all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home. Yeah, let's I want to go this, home. Let's get, let's get, exactly, let's get this. exactly. Out of all your projects, I, I think it's like picking a, a kid, but for whatever reason, maybe a friendship's come from it, a relationship or just a joyful location. When I say to you, other than the ones we've talked about, What's been a favorite project? You've done so many things. What's been a favorite project of yours for whatever reason? Well, well, right now my favorite project is 42nd Street <laughs> at the Orb I, I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> however, however, um, I have to admit, I, I did a series called The Red Road that was on Sundance TV. And you can see it on Netflix now or on iTunes. You can get it, whatever. And it was fabulous because it, was, um, it took place in uh, northern New Jersey and it involved a Native American community and I was the matriarch of that community. And um, I have Native blood and I never get a chance to play, you know, or to be my Native American self. So it was fantastic to really be able to do that, you know. And yeah, you know, and I just feel like in this particular, this particular um, nation of Native American people are comprised of 
ancestry that is African, European, and indigenous native people, you know, and that exists. And I think in the United States of America, so many of us are so many things. And the fact that we always have to choose one thing, I think is what continues to cause us to be separate as opposed to yep. us being together. Yeah. So that's the perfect way to end the interview. Do me a favor, you know these folks, I, we are watching them, right audience, during rehearsals and they are fantastic. Will you, we're gonna toss it over, will you introduce your colleagues, I please? love uh, my colleagues, my beautiful colleagues. I have Amanda Castro, Philip Atmore, and Adina Denai. Anaya. Anaya. Anaya, oh my God. See, here we go, Anaya. It's early. <laughs> Danae, yeah. Anaya Denai, who are, are three of our brilliant cast members. And they're going to do a little excerpt from In the Money, okay? And they're doing it in their street clothes, That's which is right. like crazy. And the costumes and sets for the show are fantastic. And you're just gonna get a little taste. A little bit. That's gonna blow your mind. And then you're gonna wanna see it. Production of 42nd Street starts on Tuesday and runs through August 11th. For tickets, head to ordway.org. And we have a special treat. Give it up. Here they go, everybody. Take it away. <laughs> This fabric just beautiful. Six thousand five hundred ninety-five. I don't know if I could go back to the lifestyle I had before, but I'm hoping I won't have to. We heard you plan Beyonce and Jay Z's wedding, so we want it to be bigger. Oh my god! I'm just nervous to go through all this again. Yeah. I'm gonna ask John T to marry me. Mom, are you there? I definitely see a future with him. This is not good. He doesn't have a job. What are you thinking? Don't That's the question you'll be asking. Those are just some of the couples featured in the new Lifetime show called Marrying Millions. It is produced by the same folks who make 90 Day Fiance our favorite guilty pleasure. The show, the show debuted last week, and of course we needed an expert to see if it's any good. And that means, once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for America Loves Ted. Joining us from the, from the control room is our show leader. Oh, Ted. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. You get the best assignments, uh -huh. don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, we kind of gave a little bit. What's the general, what's, what's this one all about? Rich people marrying poor people. <laughs> I mean, is you that don't the, get better than that. Okay, well, there you go. Thanks, Ted. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so rich people may, okay, expand on that a little bit, though. Okay, so, for example, couple number one here. We got Bill and Brianna. Bill is 60. Okay. Brianna is 21. So, so you're saying there's a little bit of an age gap. <laughs> yes. Bill's a billionaire. And but before we before we say that Brianna is a gold digger, Bill only dates women that are like low twenties. Okay. So Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but and, and she's trying to find a way to fit into his social life, his social circle. Uh, his friends are pretty tough. I was gonna say, no, you know, uh, when we watch, because Ted and I, we love 90 Day Fiance like Jeff does. Do you like these two, or do they just, are they just 
bad people. I kind of like them. You do? I kind of like them. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're entertaining, and he's, you know, quirky, as all billionaires are. Next. Uh, how, did, how did they, really quick on this, how do they meet? Um, he, he was, uh, she was the host at some restaurant, and he was just creeping around. <laughs> they met at the Cheesecake Factory? Yep. Mm -hmm. And he go. was a return, a return customer. Okay. Next, Rosie and Drew. Tell me about them. Rosie is very, um, sheltered. She, so she lived a very sheltered life. Drew's 39, she's like 20-ish, and uh, her parents do not approve. And apparently, we're told that if they found out how the two met, the parents would definitely never approve, and they won't tell us how they have met. They won't tell us that. Oh. It's infuriating. <laughs> your, your imagination just runs wild. I. I can't even, okay, I won't even, I'll, the audience and I will guess on the break there. Finally, <laughs> uh, what is her name? Gen, Gentile? Gentile, Gentile, and Brian? Yeah, so she's the breadwinner, she's the rich one, he's the construction worker, they're about the same age, except he's very secretive about his life. He like would only go to her house, never told her where he lived or showed her her house. We find out it's because he's living with his parents. Oh. Oh. What? Small, small red flag. Wait, 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 how old is this dude? 48. Oh! He says he really likes his parents. I like Dar too, ain't living with her. I, yeah. Mom, I would live with you though, girl. You can, you can live at Southport, yeah. Okay, so overall, you did this just for work. You did it for our show. Are you actually gonna watch this for your own pleasure? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, really quick. Really quick, I gotta tell you this. Do I have time? I do, I'll make this very short. I'm at the Target Eden Prairie yesterday, and I'm in the t-shirt aisle getting t-shirts, and this, these two women walk up to me, and I hear, hey girl, hey. And I turn around, and I go, I go, hi sweeties. And it's a, it's a woman in her 20s, and her mother, who I would imagine is probably in her 60s, and the, the woman go, the mother says, um, so my daughter uh, listens to the radio show. That's great. I watch the Jason show. You know why I watch the Jason show? For Ted. <laughs> She goes, she goes, she goes, you tell, she goes, you tell Ted, he's hot. And she goes, she goes, and he could date me, but he couldn't keep up with me. Oh. Yep. Probably true. <laughs> Love connection. That's right. So, ma'am, if you'd like to call Ted, her, his number is 612. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us, everybody. <laughs> call Ted. Shannon's back. Uh, as I said to you at the top of the broadcast, we're really excited to be heading to Duluth. Again, we're not going to be doing live broadcasts. We're doing something better. Uh, Kendall, photographer Eric, Ted, Jeff, we're all going up there to shoot a series of stories, like 15 stories. So we will be dedicating an entire week of shows in August to Duluth. So you may see us at some of your favorite restaurants, bars, wherever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and speaking of that, but I, we want to meet you. So we have organized an event to meet you. Here's the details. July 26 at 1 p.m. at the Bent Paddle Brewing Company. Come meet the two of us. We'll be there with the crew. Spread the word, everybody. Again, Friday, July 26 at 1 p.m. Shannon is here, and Shannon, uh, you have an event yes. coming up this weekend. I'm very excited. We uh, did this first on Mother's Day. It's our Pockets of Joy Comedy Through the Chaos. Yeah. So it's me, Roxanne Battle, and my good friend Tiffany Norton. So it's storytelling and stand-up. We are doing another show, another show. Yeah. yeah. So tomorrow night, 8 o'clock at the 318 Cafe in Excelsior. We're really excited. So, you all talk about everything on that yes, show. Yes, we do. It is very fun. You know what I think is interesting is that we did this on Mother's Day, and it happens to be three women that are in the show. And I've had a number of men come up and go, can I come to the show? Yeah. <laughs> yes, man up. It'll be fine. Yeah, yes. it'll be good. It's not anti-man. It just happens to be three women that are on the show. Fun. You we'll can talk still about all come. Kinds of stuff, right? It's like coming to the Jason show. You exactly. can come here. Yeah, it's going to be fun. fun. It's going to be a great time. So uh, we hope they join us. And also, at the top of the show, I told you I want to say uh, congratulations one more time uh, to my girl, Alexis, if you missed the top of the show. I, uh, Alexis Thompson from the radio show. 
uh, after years of, of, of trying and trying and trying with her husband, Angel, Alexis surprised us all this morning by revealing she is pregnant and uh, is due in January. So one more time, I can't, I can't say it enough. Congratulations, and I love you, sweetheart. I love you and your good a fantastic mom. Monday on the show, the young Minnesota girl who nearly won Food Network's Kids Baking Championship will be here. Uh, I want to say thanks to this amazing studio audience. Thanks for a great week of shows. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. We'll see you Monday, everybody. Have a great weekend.